Well, hello, and you're welcome back to Jimrism. And we are in Satisfactory, as you probably can see. And from what you already know from the title, but we are going to manufacture some computers today. This is a PC, personal computer. Uh, I don't know if your computer looks like this, but it should. This is the ultimate computer, and we're gonna make a lot of lots of these. Fortunately, it's not very hard, because in an earlier episode, we took the liberty and make a factory dedicated to circuit boards, which is the most important part of the computers. And you can see the size of these circuit boards. Can anyone explain to me how that fits in the computer? Like, it's literally larger, but whatever. Let us uh, s smash these circuit boards into computers. And we should also look at the manufacturer. All right, so here we have it, computer. We can do two and a half per minute. We need 25 circuit boards. And if you remember from a few episodes ago, we are making this many, 30. And that is because there is another thing that needs circuit boards in here, and that's the adaptive control unit. And it needs exactly five, so that's why the minimum amount was 30. But really, this is a serious. Please look back so that you can get hang of this entire uh, rundown. Also, one thing I do want to say is I want to just give a huge thanks to all the commissioned officers in the army of gymnasium, most notably Admiral Super Dave, Captain Y, Commander Jacob, Stellar Lieutenant C2, Venerated Lieutenant Parba Greed, Lieutenants Asteria, Tyler Ross, and Vincent Veritas. Thanks a lot for supporting the channel on Patreon, it helps so much. So in any case, here we have the uh, components we need, 25 circuit board per minute, we already have this, we're making 30 in fact, so we, have, uh, we can afford to uh, do some upgrades and even have the adaptive control unit thing. We need 22.5 cables per minute, we need 45 plastic per minute, and we need 130 screws per minute. Now the cool thing is, we have already set up a pretty decent plastic uh, production, as you probably understand uh, from before. We have the output of the plastic which we were making in the new setup combined with a setup of the uh, old factories and that's definitely like we, we already covered plastic right with a good bit and now we could go and calculate exactly how much plastic we do and don't do but it doesn't really matter too much because we honestly uh, like we already we already are making all the parts that need plastic right now, so we can think about that a little bit later if we have to. Anyways, uh, this episode we're doing computers however, so plastic we got, screws, 130 per minute. If you saw last episode, which you should have, if you didn't, please watch that first. But we made some of these heavy modular frames. And these heavy modular frames, they required a lot of screws, right? But they didn't use all the screws we could make. We are actually producing an excess of 90 screws per minute. And that with the input in the little box that we had since the early stages of this game, well, now we can finally start utilizing our outputs of screws. Isn't that quite beautiful? So we already got the screws, we already got the plastic, we got the circuit boards, and I'm gonna check if we got the cables, I don't know if we do. But I do know that we got a lot of uh, copper, copper ingots here, so we can actually uh, produce some cables here if need be too. <laughs> Look here, we're actually making 30 cables per minute, and we need 22.5, so I think that the trickle we will get after outputting it will actually be enough just a simple cable production here we don't use it for anything else this these cables they're simply going into the sink so they're not uh, nothing important is here is happening with these cables in any case to make this particular factory we're going to use the inline manufacturer prefab and if you are saying like what the hell is that 
please look a little bit before when I made a video in this series which was about um, five blueprints you cannot live without. And I mean that. That's uh, It's some good blueprints, man. You should definitely check that out. Anyways, I'm going to snap some stuff to the grid here. So I'm going to expand this platform in order to fit the I manufacture module, which is of course the module we're going to use as we made it in earlier episode just for this purpose. I will say this, however, that the I manufacturer, it is basically just a manufacturer, which is connected up with a nice input so that it's very easy to connect up to other producing uh, things. Like it's not more than that. So if you're like, I can't possibly watch that video right now, then no, no not to worry. You can, you can check that video out later. Um, because what we're basically having, we're just having a simple manufacturer and we have four inputs there and we have a throughput here. There is like nothing more than that, so fear not. And we're connecting on power. Oh my God, this template is so handy. It's so handy. And again, five blueprints you can't live without. Three of those blueprints look like this, almost. <laughs> All right, this is probably a little bit confusing. So we'll just remove it. Just adding a little splitter here before the container. There we go. So here we have the circuit boards are coming in there. So yeah, if you want to know how to make circuit boards, well, basically have two machines making circuit boards. No, four machines, I mean, not two. Have four machines making circuits board. And when you do that, you have enough for making computers as well as making the other space elevator part thing we need later on without getting into a shortage. That's the short version, but again, check the previous episode. So there we have that one. Now we just need to add some different other stuff like getting in the plastic. Thanks to having the circuit board production in the same in line here, we know that we already, we already know how much plastic we need and we already have the plastic infrastructure drawn here. So the only thing we need to do is basically to draw one of these war mark one belts, not even more than that, just mark one belts and get them in here. So that's already connected up because this is a prefab and it's a pretty smart one, but basically plastic should uh, come in here. And there you see plastic is starting to trickle in and we require 45 per minute so uh, we know that uh, when we built the circuit boards, we have a speed potential of 270 per minute. Now we don't make that much plastic, but in any case, it's more than uh, 120, which is too little. Here we can see mark three belts all the way because, uh, well, when making the circuit board factory, it is a little bit of a precursor to this video, of course, but we already thought of that, of course. So make sure that you have enough plastic to power both, both your uh, circuit board factory and your computer one. And if you wanna know how much plastic that is, well, it's 45 per minute. Plus, if we go in here, 30 times four. And that's of course 120. So that should be 165 plastic per minute. And the plastic setup we did for the circuit board setup, uh, I think it produced 160. And then we have like ish 80 more or something from this line here. So it should be absolutely fine. We should have a good output of, uh, well, more than we need <laughs> is, uh, is the conclusion. Right, so there we go. The plastic is going in there. We could reuse the uh, line there, which is very handy indeed. Now we need to get some screws and we need to get some plastic. So let's check our current production of screws. And we have 120 screws per minute, which is good, but not quite enough. 
And over here at the heavy water frame facility we built last time, we know that we have this machine here. It produces 50 screws per minute and this 40 screws per minute. So we have 90 screws per minute. And what we're going to do, we're going to combine this up into a merger. We're going to drag it over there and then we're going to connect up this little facility. No. Uh, the, the little the, the old screw facility here because the good thing about that screw facility is that it recycles all the screws uh, it overproduces and this little setup does not right merge the screws from over here so mark one belts is suffices and they combine up to mark three because well we're going to have more than 120 in the end so it makes sense there we have it we should be able to connect it up and we should be able to even make it so extremely aesthetic like look at this look at this little belt thing here one good way to not make your factories look too jumbled that is to kind of reuse the same connection lines you're already using so here you can see i connected up this bus here so i made the screws go this direction too and then I just add a little lift so that I can make it go this direction too. And when we do this, it just looks so much... It looks like it's meant to be. Even though we all know that everyone's factories is just actually somewhat of an unplanned mess that we can fix so it looks cool and pretend it's very planned. That's, uh, that's how we all build factories almost. If you don't build factories this way, you are probably in a minority. So in any case, uh, yes, so this is of course 90 per minute. We of course need to hook up this thing here. So to be able to do the sorting, we actually need to make sure that we have a smart splitter here. Because otherwise it won't really work. So the ones that are not getting used should automatically getting, be getting recycled here. But we don't want our production to be disturbed by when we're taking out screws from here. So what we're going to do, the center output is going to be overflow. So we only fill up this container when we have some extra. And the right output is going to be, uh, well, any. So this is the right output. And we're going to connect it up to a... Uh, merger up here like that we know that the other one is producing 90 um, so we're only needing to fill up for uh, some of the output whoops so of course it's 90 so that's 100 110 120 and 130 is what we need so basically we can suffice with having a mark one belt here it adds 60 per minute into the output which should be perfectly fine for our purposes so now hopefully this should be this should be working out pretty perfectly we should just go here and drag this mark 3 line to the input of the factory so we're back at the manufacturer inside it is and uh, we have four inputs plastic here something here um well the circuits there and the cables here so we'll need to decide which goes where uh, and of course the cables should we should make sure that the cables have good enough speeds of getting in here now in this prefab the template i saved them with has mark three belts uh, from the get-go so we're gonna say that okay this bottom line is gonna be the mark three belt so we're basically just going to draw this Mark III belt here in the bottom to act as a throughput uh, that we can access all of the production with. So I'm just going to dive into here and add it as a beautiful little throughput. Requires some small parkour scales, but on the other hand, we can make this factory look very cool and also build it very quickly. Look at that. And there we have it. Oh no. The toxic flower has gotten to us. 
Anyways, here we have the input. There we have the screws. So we can basically just drag it here. And there we have it. They will be going to the manufacturer now. So the only thing more we need to solve is the cables. So to be honest, it's uh, much easier to make some cables locally than to actually draw the production line. So because we have a beautiful belt of uh, copper up here, which is of course used in making the circuits, but uh, we should be able to leach from this belt because the output um, unused unused output what is that it is uh, 120 minus uh, 80 or something like that so we have enough um, is, the, is the short answer in any case we should be able to steal some from here around and just have a little small uh, cable production and input it into there the last remaining input happens to be around here too now we already know it suffices with mark one belts so that's what we do just for tidiness we can again as in the earlier video we did add belts crossover just to be able to place mergers and stuff like that in a smooth way works every time beautiful so here we have the cable input just need to make it and if you don't how, know how to be how to make cables well i have no idea how we've gotten this far into the game but if you really need help with that or if your friend does please refer them to this little series uh, because as you probably remember copper basic copper was one of the earliest tutorials we actually uh, got together and made in any case can't believe that we have to handcraft some cables this late in the game. Oh my god. But that's just a laziness that I don't want to walk to get some cables. So in any case, this one is going to make cables and that needs 60 wires and to make cables. However, we only actually need to have a par target production of 22.5, if I remember correctly. And to make sure that I do remember correctly, we're going to climb in here. Right, what did you need? 22.5. Yes, we are quite there. We're there. So 22.5. Right, and that means we need 45 uh, per minute. And we're going to make wire. God damn it. Iron wire? Are you kidding me? <laughs> Look, isn't that quite funny? If we had some iron here instead, we could use this alternate recipe to... Wait, we need two of this. Never mind, that's uh, that's just weird. Let's not think about that. Okay, so make 30 wire per minute. We need 45. So this one also makes wire. Uh, we already have 30. We need 15 more. Um, so there we have it. 15 plus 30 equals 45, 45 required. Yes, that's right. So we'll just connect it up. And then of course, we'll need to take 7.5 plus 15, 22.5. What a surprise. So we need to subtract uh, 22.5 over there at the uh, input of wires because of course we're stealing we're, we're stealing these ingots before the input so it's so important to keep track of stuff like this because if you don't um, you're gonna be very confused very soon by the way you can see we have our little uh, uh, wire wire thing here um, our little highway so we're basically going to take it from the other side uh, in order to not interfere with our infrastructure. Can be a smart way to do. I'm not saying you have to, I'm just giving you some tips. And we'll just need to connect up some power to these ones. Oh, <laughs> oh what are you doing there? Here you go. It's connected up. The ingots are popping in here. We are going to use 22.5 gonna update that sign and they are merging into this one which is producing 22.5 cables per minute 
which is inserting itself into this machine, which is then going into the manufacturer, which should mean, technically, that we are on a pretty good way of making computers in like a second or two. Look at that. The wires are starting to pop in. And look, there it came. Our first industrially manufactured computer. By the way, this thing is a little bit too funny. How about just running through these doors here? We, ha <laughs> we have all... <laughs> And these motivating signs isn't that quite motivating. I think it is. It uh, improves work culture or not. In any case, uh, right, we need to update the sign, which is over here. 97.5 is the new number after the calculations. 97.5. All right, then. Yes, there we go. Beautiful. Which means it's good we have kept track about the input and output. We don't have much wiggle room between the input and output now. We can't steal much more of this copper. We have kind of almost used it up. And of course, for the five remaining ones we have up here. What are we doing here? We're going to connect this up as a throughput. Because of course, we're going to use these... Uh, in future projects making some space elevator parts so we can just have a little throughput going there and I don't think what I remember you don't really need circuit boards very often so I don't think we'll need to draw a line home I think they're only used to produce things but again it was a t it was some time ago I wasn't that at this stage of the game and it might have updated who knows but anyways we have our options open and here we have the computadoras. So let us get some container. Let's go with an industrial container. Hook that up. And watch the computers flow into this glorious container. Isn't that quite amazing? We have successfully put together a computer manufacturing facility. Now they do produce uh, pretty slowly. Uh, I only have one manufacturer producing computers and that's kind of the minimum you need. It's only 1.5 per minute after all. But you know what? I think it's gonna be just fine for what we're doing. We're not making the biggest factory. We might make some super efficient factories in the future that really utilize like all the cool things we can use. But right now, we're trying to solve basic production. Which means we're doing a playthrough of the game, not some very strange min-maxing. Which we might do later, but not now. Now we're doing a walkthrough, hand in hand, this entire game. So in any case, I hope you enjoyed this episode too. Be sure to check out the other ones, and I'll be seeing you in future episodes. This has been your host, Jim Odesim, and I'm Simon signing out. I'll see you next time, and remember to like the video. Bye-bye.